Bishop Samuel Lawrence Green Sr. and Supervisor Phyllis M. Green, the greatest presiding elder at all African Methodism, presiding elder Phyllis C. Anderson. He was with us on Monday. And his wonderful wife, Sister Sandra A. Anderson. To the best day God gave me after Jesus. <laughs>
Y'all heard that song? Y'all got the Sister Black Girl reference. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. Sometimes you just like it when people tell you good stuff. But there's a kernel of truth in there. Oh, he says it all to God is, but I'm not the reason behind it. I'm the catalyst, maybe. But the reason is you and God. God is good. God is changing us. Slowly and surely, he's changing us. And it's coming through the hearing and preaching of the word of God. Because the hearing and the preaching of the word of God has transformative power. Yeah. Many, many people use the Bible for a variety of reasons. Many use the Bible as a weapon to hurt other people. Many use the Bible to control other people. Many wars have been fought over the Bible. Families have split over the Bible. In the book Sapiens by Harari, he makes the point that Christians have killed more Christians than any other group. We want to think the Romans killed more Christians. Christians have killed more Christians than any other group. And the catalyst for them doing that is the Bible. <coughs> During the Inquisition, Christians tortured Christians. During the Protestant Reformation, Christians burnt Christians at the stake. Even in modern day Ireland, Protestants and Catholics went to war with each other. The Bible in the hands of the wrong person is a very dangerous weapon. In that same book, Sapien, uh, Harari claims that the Bible in the hands of a priest, now we can say Protestant preachers since I'm not a priest, the Bible in the hands of a Protestant preacher was far more effective than a soldier with a gun. The great prophet Stevie Wonder said, The great prophet Stevie Wonder said, We can't trust you when you take a stand with a gun and Bible in your hand. Have you ever noticed that some of the most destructive movements on earth were developed by Bible readers? The southern United States is known as the Bible Belt of the United States. Amen. There are churches on every corner, and if you turn on your radio or TV, you're going to hear evangelical preaching on every network. Amazingly, this geographic area that we call the Bible Belt is known for racism, sexism, homophobia, Amen. classism, and many other social ills. When the Bible grabs the heart of a racist, he or she becomes a saint. When the racist grabs a Bible, it becomes the most dangerous book on the in Matthew chapter 5, we see Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. It's the most powerful sermon ever preached. Amen. In this sermon, Jesus is literally turning the world of the Pharisees upside down. Jesus seems to be attacking everything they thought was true and right. He begins by saying, you have heard that it was said. And then he comes and topples their whole world. That's why he gives a preface to that teaching. He says, do not think that I've come to abolish the law and the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Five times in Matthew chapter 5, do we hear that statement, you have heard that it was said. Why would Jesus, the word made flesh, have, made, have a different method of reading the Bible than the Pharisees? Let me remind you about the Pharisees. The Pharisees are committed 
We need to be careful. We don't have to. I need to say one more word before we get into three short sermonic points. I heard a sermon this week and the gentleman stood up and said, I don't interpret the Bible. I just teach the word. Let me tell you a little secret. Everybody interprets the Bible. Everybody interprets the Bible. We, we interpret the Bible based on our relationship with God. We interpret the Bible based on our experiences in life. We interpret the Bible based on our faith community. We are all interpreting the Bible. We even read the Bible differently at different times and stages in our lives. The Bible reads differently to a baby Christian than to a seasoned saint. The Bible reads differently during times of storm than it does during times of blessing. The Bible reads differently when it's in the hand of a believer or in the hand of an unbeliever. Our goal and our desire when we read the Bible will be different when we have a different motive. Some people read the Bible to prove their righteousness. And let me tell you, there's a curse for that. Some people read the Bible to condemn their neighbor. Let me tell you, there's a verse for that. Some people read the Bible to save the world. Thank God there's a verse for that. And if we take any one verse and try to build a doctrine, we're in trouble. That's why you hear people talk about the whole counsel of God. This I'm skipping, y'all. I'm skipping, I'm skipping. There are three quick sermonic points. The same thing we had last week when we talked to the children last week. We're going to talk to you. How can we prevent from being a modern day Pharisee? How can we read our Bible in a way that will bring God glory? And the first thing I think we need to understand is that we must read our Bibles through the lens of love. God loves everyone. God loves every person on the planet. People who are sinners have fallen short
We must read the Bible through the lens of human compassion. Jesus is always aware in Scripture of the impact of what he's doing on the people around him. Jesus had compassion for everyone. Yeah. But most church leaders. That was the only group Jesus gave a hard time to those Pharisees and Sadducees. And even then, he was compassionate toward them. But he realized that he needed them to see who they were before they could change. The simple commandment of remember the Sabbath day to keep it open. They spelled out every possibility to violating it. And they wanted to enforce it. And they wanted to be sure that no corporate sin would enter in by allowing others to violate it. But here comes Jesus. And in every possible way, he violates that Sabbath. He knew it would get on their nerves. He knew it would even get them to the point of wanting to kill him. But he healed on the Sabbath because it was compassionate. Amen. Oh, yes, he did. He fed people corn on the Sabbath day because it was compassionate. He told a man to pick up his bed and walk on the Sabbath day because it was compassionate. Amen. So even when they looked at the law, they couldn't see where this was the will of God. They should have known that if their actions were not compassionate, they were not Relationships. 